the Onslaught revelation is the mega-sized conclusion to Way of X as Onslaught, the 90s supervillain baby of Professor X and Magneto, unleashes their ultimate reign of violent terror on the mutant island of Krakoa. Today I'll answer, what is Onslaught's grand plan and where does the mysterious entity come from? What is Legion and Nightcrawler's plan to save Krakoa? Who is on the new X-Men team coming out of this book and what's it going to be called heading into a new series launch announced here today in 2022. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of comicbookherald.com. You are listening to Cracking Krakoa number 198, a review of Onslaught Revelation number one. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting here on the channel. It all helps me out a great deal. Casual Krakoas are going to be going live every Wednesday after X-Men and New Marvel Comics are released, circa 5.15 Central Standard Time. Subscribe to the channel so you can see when those live streams go live. And as always, check the links in the show notes for playlists where you can find all the videos after they go up. Reading orders for all X-Men comics can be found at comicbookherald.com. Spoilers for Discuss Comics may follow. Writer Cy Spurrier, artist Bob Quinn, colors by Havits Tartaglia, letters by Clayton Cowles. Onslaught Revelation picks up a short distance of time removed from Way of X number 5, and let's be very clear about this up front, this is 100% a finale to the Way of X story, with all the players making a return for at least a moment in the plot. At the conclusion of Way of X, we learn that when mutants are resurrected on Krakoa now, Onslaught is basically sneaking into their being like a virus of malignant hate and rage. To do this, Onslaught is feasting on the gaps between when a mutant dies and when their backup holds the essence of a mutant. And by the end of the series' fifth issue, Onslaught has infested a vast majority of Krakoa, including Professor Rex and Magneto crucial quiet council leadership on the island nation. It's ancillary to the narrative, but I do love the detail here that Onslaught's sword appears to be an inversion of the Krakoan Tower we've seen teased since Hickman's House of X and where Nimrod lives in the Powers of Ten timeline. Onslaught's grand plan is called Cruciball, an all-night rage party that ends with the young partying mutants all killing each other at midnight just for the thrill of it and because they know they'll come back via resurrection. Or, in other words, every hardcore show I went to in my early 20s. This is the general impact of Onslaught throughout the story, again, not dissimilar to how Shadow King drives hate in the Muir Island saga, or Cassandra Nova weaponizes it in X-Men Red, or, you know, Jack Kirby literalizes it in the Captain America story Mad Bomb. But what the mutants don't know is that Onslaught is also working on Charlie X to delete all the mutant backups. Apparently it's not that hard to do, so resurrection will not actually be possible. To prevent this, Nightcrawler and Legion work to free Kirkoa from Onslaught's influence. They rescue Pixie first because her soul dagger can free mutants from the influence of Onslaught and all the hate that entails. Now, the other part of this plan is Legion forms the House of L, accessible through a Krakoan gateway on Arako, aka Mars, into his mind, which is a very cool idea. A vast majority of the issue takes place in the House of L, a.k.a. the Altar, which, if memory serves, is the same mental prison scape where Legion once controlled his, note the fun play on words here, Alters. This is such a great use of Legion's power set, too, owning the fact that Legion has created the Age of Apocalypse and Age of X more or less by accident, but here playing with pocket realities intentionally and using his Omega-level mutant abilities to actually, you know, help out mutant kind. The biggest miss for me, though, through all this, is that within the altar, this story spends an inordinate amount of time on the continued animosity between Fabian Cortez, who killed Lost Parents, and Lost, whose parents were killed by Fabian Cortez, but specifically on the reasons for Fabian's behavior. Now, I don't really think the desire to see, like, to wholly understand Fabian Cortez is interesting, <laughs> like, at all. I think the general idea here is to find empathy and new ways forward for even the worst of us, which is good, but the in-story result is frankly a chore, and at the expense yet again of Lost's own character development. I think there's a real over-evaluation here of how interested we are in seeing Fabian Cortez understood and potentially redeemed. Unsurprisingly, Onslaught makes their way into the altar after the Crucible, partiers are gathered there, and again, Legion's ability to host a temple inside his brain and bring a nightclub into it is flipping the coolest, and we get a renewed Krakoan Onslaught design. I really like Bob Quinn's art throughout the series, but the design for me is a little bit too much Mysterio by way of Dormammu. Nonetheless, the big reveal here is that Orcus used Lost to sneak in their Onslaught bomb. Now, Spurrier uses Lost throughout. 
I don't think there's malice intended, but it's a consistent oversight, okay? This black woman is consistently tortured, experimented on, and spoken over. I've seen the criticism levied throughout the run and was willing to see how Lost Story ended, but somehow it actually gets worse here, being used basically as a tool by Orcus to infest Krakoa, and that's a major valid criticism of the work to my mind. At the conclusion of Wave X number 5, Nightcrawler finally has an epiphany about what the way forward should be for mutant culture, but he can't write it down before sacrificing himself to stop uh, Planet Araco from getting uh, wholly destroyed. <laughs> Fortunately, Fabian Cortez remembers the key phrase to trigger Kurt's memory, and here we learn what the big philosophy is going to be. It is muddled, to say the least. What is Spurrier slash Nightcrawler's spark? Okay, what is the spark of X? Is it empathy? As we learn in the altar, all minds are one, okay? So maybe there's a true understanding of your neighbor and of your enemy. There's also a catchphrase here of sorts, we rule us, which is a nice inversion of where Spurrier nets out in his X-Men legacy, great, great work on the character of Legion, which was Legion saying, I rule me. I'm in control of my own decisions. Here we net out with we rule us, right? That sort of same philosophy, but expanded for an entire mutant culture. We do also see a visual here of Lost and Fabian Cortez teaching the spark to Together to the children we've only seen sitting around for Exodus's sort of um, more cult-like, you know, Krakoan philosophy and culture teaching, which is interesting and a positive move forward for both those characters. Now, the spark does get defined, quote unquote, in the book of the spark. Okay, this is the progression. We've been seeing Nightcrawler's writings in the way of X as he attempts to found what we thought was going to be a mutant religion, but crucially here in the book of the spark, right up front, this is not a mutant religion. Okay, it's a way of living. So it's more a guideline, a set of principles of how mutants can live their life for mutant culture. Um, but the spark, you know, I, I think my takeaways, like I said, is about empathy. It's about understanding your neighbor. But then there's also this thing about the spark being about taking risks, okay? And we get about swimming into the dark, if you will. And we get Nightcrawler giving this whole parable of a whale and a shark that I won't attempt to replicate here. But... It, it's muddled. <laughs> Spurrier is an incredibly cerebral writer, and often it's his greatest strength. That's what I find so interesting about so much of his work. But here I think he's overthinking things, truly, trying to establish this pure way forward for mutant culture, and it kind of feels like everything and nothing all at once. I'm not totally sure what the spark is. I mean, literally here it says, the spark is innovation and risk and mischief and courage. This reads too much to me, like a business website describing their what their offerings and a lot of buzzwords that don't actually mean things. Now, can the spark go on to be defined more clearly in, in the ensuing comics to come talking about this? Absolutely. But I was disappointed by Onslaught Revelation looking at this and saying, I've read this a handful of times now, and I'm not totally sure what you are trying to even say this thing is. Okay, so but where the series is going is very exciting, and I am really looking forward to it. We have Nightcrawler founding the Legion Ares, okay? Not the Legion Ares, that's a DC property. Legion is superheroes, right? But it's the Legion Ares, a play on Legion. They're going to be working inside David's altar headquarters, again, inside his House of L, which is really cool. Nightcrawler insists here they are not cops, but their tagline is, we keep the peace, we keep the law, we keep the spark. So, not priest cops okay we'll see how this actually manifests itself as we keep the law like how do you do that and not be the police force of Krakoa that's an interesting thing I, I actually would really like to see that play out here in the new mutant culture on Krakoa um, as you can see from the lineup the new team series presumably the book will be called the spark of X but maybe it'll be something else we have Dr. Nemesis Pixie Nightcrawler Juggernaut forget me not and blindfold again all inside Legion's head so I have to think Legion and the Zorns will continue to play a role. Now, this is an exciting lineup for a handful of reasons, right? Forget me not, big favorite. <laughs> That's a Spurrier co-creation, I believe. This is a character with a mutant ability where when people are when anyone is looking at them, they can see them and interact with them, but the second they look away, they forget they ever existed. Okay, it's a really interesting character that you can do a lot of wild stuff with. Juggernaut, last we saw, was in the Juggernaut miniseries written by Fabian DiCieza, not allowed in Krakoa, basically because Professor X, you know, it's his <laughs> Longtime evil stepbrother, there's some animosity, but also not a mutant, right? Which is part of it as well. Um, but the biggest one, the biggest one inclusion here by far is Blindspot, a precognitive mutant who has not been allowed to be resurrected via Moira's no precogs are, are able to be resurrected protocols. Now, what this tells me is that when this book gets solicited, 
presumably from merch 2022 post inferno post lives and deaths of wolverine we're gonna know by the end of inferno that precognitive mutants are back like the existence of blindfold on this team feels like a giveaway to me that precogs are coming back which is something i think we all kind of are anticipating we don't know for sure we're literally one week out from the inferno event at the time of recording but we know a key focus there is going to be mystique trying to bring destiny back who's like moira's arch enemy and the the key precognitive player but if blindfold if blindfold's going to be back for this comic that to me says um you know precogs coming back in a big way that's exciting i'm really looking forward to it this is a cool lineup i a big picture i think you know with wave x and now with really you know this is like basically wave x issues six and seven one thing i've appreciated about size Spurrier on wave x is that this is a creator with history in the x-men universe and a writer who you know at a minimum truly understands certain players right legion and dr nemesis namely on a deep level but now i'm wondering if this work doesn't feel too much like an isolated Spurrier verse. And that's not really the fault of the writer, so much as the absence or the, you know, ensuing anticipated absence of a Hickman at the center of the line. In this kind of hollow shared X universe now where creators play with all their own favorite toys, but without the promise of integration that made the launch of Dawn and the possibility about where everything was heading so thrilling. You know, it's it's a bigger conversation than just this one issue, but 2022 is really going to need to re-solidify the interconnectedness of this line before it's simply what it was for much of the 2010s. I think it's very much in danger of that. Again, Onslaught Revelation for me was a disappointment. I don't think it delivered on what I hoped this book would be, probably through like the first two or three issues of Way of X. Um, but nonetheless, it's like I still was very positive about Way of X. Um, I like the build toward this new team and what the future could hold for this series. So we shall see if the good things are to come. Thanks, everybody, who supports Comic Book Herald. You can do so over at patreon.com slash comicbookherald. Or, of course, you can simply like, subscribe, share the channel, or go on over to comicbookherald.com and check out all the great work that we're doing there. Thanks in particular to all of our mysterious benefactors for supporting Comic Book Herald at such a generous level. I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald on social, particularly Twitter and Instagram. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast for more from me. And again, Casual Krakoa's Wednesdays, circa 515 Central Standard Time. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.